Bronwyn Lund from Bronholm Tours here. I'm uh, on the island of Bronholm and today I'm uh, in the main town called Oana, which is uh, on the west coast of the island. And this is the first of what I hope will be a lot of walking tours um, of this great town. And um, I really hope you enjoy the tour. So we're standing um, on a square and it's called Hall of Axe Torwood and uh, that means uh, the square of the watch. And um, it was the town gate from the south uh, and uh, was built as a guardhouse and jail in 1743-44 using building materials actually taken from Hammersmith Castle. For many years the building was the only brick built house in honour. Um, and due to the narrow passage at this point, a pavement was established at the east end of the building in 1940. So that archway's only been um, there since 1940. And uh, this building directly in front of us is called Merchant Wanner's Gore. So it was the Wanner Merchant's um, warehouses and uh, it was built in 1813. And uh, I don't know if we can see it, we'll cross over the road before we go into town, but um, there's actually a belvedere on the roof from where the merchant could keep an eye on his ships in the harbour. We're going to actually end the tour down looking out over the harbour after we've been inside the church. And um, the brick built building, which is on the left hand side right over here with the beautiful red roses out the front of it, um, is called Rector Cufford's house and it was built in 1894. And that's a granite sculpture on the square in front of us there. Um, and that was by sculptor Bent Sounson. And uh, it's indicative of the granite trade that, uh, that um, has meant so much for Bonhomme. And just over to our right as we're walking along um, is uh, some beautiful half-timbered houses. Now, we're going to take a bit of a meandering walk uh, through the town because um, it's high summer, so there's a lot of tourists around and it's going, to be, uh, it's going to be a pretty busy day today, a lot of people in the film. And uh, the other thing is that um, the streets have these wonderful hollyhocks uh, growing up and down them. So I just want to uh, walk along this street and do a little bit of a meander through uh, before we get to uh, some of the um, interesting market uh, squares and uh, town squares that are a part of this, uh, this town. No, that way. Straight down that street. Really? Yes. <laughs> I know, it's easy to get disoriented in these old streets. I know. So. What is your thing on the top? I'm just uh, filming a walk around the town for right. YouTube. So, oh, but if, I'll you? keep you in, but I can also slice you out if you want, don't want to be in the film. You can see yourself on YouTube. Oh, okay. which sounds a bit odd but um, I think we just have to uh, have to go with the flow so you can see these just these lovely hollyhocks and uh, all of these little tiny 
streets which have not been built for cars. So on the right hand side here we have a very uh, crooked, <laughs> half timbered house. This is very typical of the buildings that were built in the, in the 1850s. Some of the houses are leaning a little bit out to the street, it's so old, the pressure of gravity is taking its toll. So we're coming back out onto the street we were on before it uh, before we meandered off and uh, I just wanted to walk down this street because on the right hand side over here is what would have been a market square back in the day and uh, we're just about to walk through and in front of the post office. This was the original post office of the town and uh, it has uh, been converted into a hotel now. And uh, the square that uh, we're just going to walk around has been a traditional market square for around a thousand years and as you can see from the flea market it's still a place of trade and there's a good tea shop over there on the right hand side you can get all sorts of teas from there and then you can see the old buildings, the old trade buildings and, and uh, stores that have been built up with the wealth of the trade and fishing industry and agricultural industry of the island. We're going to uh, turn the corner just up here and uh, walk down to the main square of the town. Now the interesting thing about the main square of the town was, or is, that it was never a um, market square. It was actually a parade ground for the military. And uh, so the military commander, I guess, the representative of the king, would march his soldiers up and down the parade ground so it's actually not a square as such it's a, it's a quite a large rectangle and I just don't think it has the same charm as the square that we just saw back there where there's been trade going on for you know for 
for almost a millennium, but this is the main drag down into Ghana. So you can see that it's actually quite a large rectangle. And we're just going to uh, walk a little bit around it because I want to show you this very interesting fountain that um, seems to be a memorial to slugs. There's a couple of restaurants up here and a few supermarkets and the banks of course are on the left hand side. So here we are, here's the, uh, try not to get run over here, here's the uh, fountain. And if you look very closely at the fountain, you'll see that it's actually mouth-spitting slugs or slugs that are putting the water into the, into the fountain. That's quite interesting. I haven't seen that before. And down the other end is a um, ice cream shop. So, just going to walk past the banks now and uh, through some of the old streets again just to get a flavour of the, the old streets of the city and uh, then have a look um, inside the church. the Ghana town and uh, now we're seeing, seeing all the modern buildings and we're coming up to what would have once upon a time been a large merchant's residence where goods and things that were going to be uh, traded or sent out into the world would have been stored in this lovely building in front of us. Quite a magnificent experience to be on the ferry and uh, and uh, look at the town of Wino as you're coming into the harbour and there's the church up on the hill and a lot of the people who have grown up on Wanaholm and particularly in Wano get quite emotional when they see the church when they're on the ferry when they're coming home because it's just, it's just such a lovely, lovely view. So we'll go and have a look at the view looking down at the harbour and then uh, we'll 
go into the church and have a look in the church. But it's quite big by Von Holm standards. ships in today actually the big cruise key is right over there to the left and then there's another cruise ship in here it's the first time this summer that we've been able to have more than one cruise ship in at one time so the the tourist tourism industry is certainly growing uh, a lot um, on von Holm. and over to the right we have the passenger ferry ferries that bring people over from Sweden and Germany and Poland. So you can actually get ferries out to those uh, three countries from the, uh, from the harbour. So now we have to go in and have a look uh, at the church. The uh, entry is uh, around the side of the church, so you don't actually go into the front of the church as such to, to see it. The church has changed over time but has stood on this spot for more than 700 years. For the inhabitants in Rona, it has been a place of refuge in times of joy and sorrow. It has stood witness to war, plague and bombardment. It has stood guard over trading vessels from the Hansa League, Swedish and Russian warships, freight ships, fishing boats and ferries. The first church in Rona was a humble building built around 1275. At that time, the parish church was Knudskirk, Kiaka or St Knut's Church and in Rona together with Salomon's Kapel were merely chapels at ease. All that remains of this building are a few foundations in the church's northeast corner. The increasing importance of the town is reflected in the church's growth. Around 1350 a westward extension was built almost doubling its length. Parts of the existing north wall date from this period, together with the Gothic women's door and the devotional cross. Under the latter are entombed five contemporary silver coins. The font is also from this period and is carved from Gotland limestone. Towards the end of the Middle Ages, the church was extended with a new pentagonal core, but a huge foundation stone from the original core remains in the north wall. 
The medieval church was allowed to remain largely untouched until 1797. A western tower had been added in 1550 and subsequently rebuilt in 1699. The church's space problems were solved with the addition of the galleries to which children and servants were sent. The so-called Pax Gallery is preserved. This gallery was due to a poor runner boy, Michael Nielsen, who travelled to Pomerania, Pomerania, where he worked his way up through the ranks in a manor house. On his employer's death, he married the widow and inherited his employer's home and name, Pax. He gave his home church a gallery, originally placed on the north side of the pulpit for the use of the town's local dignitaries, whose nameplates can still be seen behind the Southern Gallery's balustrade. This gallery, with its pictures from the Passion, has since been moved several times, but now forms the facade to the two side galleries. So that was a uh, tour of uh, Rainer, uh, one of many I hope to do uh, as we go along. This is Bronwyn Lund from Bronholm Tours, signing off. Bye for now. <laughs>